This video will look at multiple classes. So we've already seen one class as operation. What we can have and the whole point of object oriented programming is that we can use more than one class. OK, so program itself can contain multiple classes and we're going to have a look at that. So we're going to have a look at multiple classes in the one program. Um, and when we do this, we have to have a kind of holder class for want of a better name. So we have to do that because we've still got our main method and the main method cannot live in the namespace, has to be declared in a class. So we have to do a kind of holder class for that. This is what I mean here. So it's color coded. So the kind of reddish one up here is the main class. So that is the holder class, so class program. And then as the example is here, we have class one in blue, class two in black, and both of them are closed when those class declarations are done. And then we have the main section down here. So the main section has to live inside a program. It cannot just live in the namespace. If you try and do that, you'll get an error message. OK, so best way to do this is do it by example. So this is an, is an example. So we've got two class diagrams here, one for the square class and one for the cube class. So as you can see, we have got private variables in both of them because they've got minus and we have got public variables in public methods rather in both of them as well because it has a plus. So one will calculate the square of a number and the other one will calculate, calculate the cube of a number, which is the number multiplied by itself three times. So to start off with, we'll have a look at the program. So we've got class program and I've just left it as default class program and left it there as is. And we need this because we have to have the main section inside a class and not inside the namespace because it won't work. Right, so looking at the code, we have got class square. So we're defining our class here as square. And we've got the variables to be used inside the class and they're private variables as always. So private int and we've got num square and i. And then we have the constructor. So remember the constructor runs every time this particular class is instantiated. So every time an object is created for square, the constructor runs. So what it will do is it will initialize the value num square equal to zero. And then we have got two methods that are both public. So um, we have got public void calc square, which has just got a for loop that runs from 1 to 10. And it will just calculate the square of i. So i will start at 1 and increment all the way up to 10. And then it will print the results. So print results. It will output a right line. It will write out the value of i, tab across, and then we'll write out the square number that has been calculated and then take a new line. So that's all class square does. And just to point out here, the constructor, remember, has to be public and it also has to have the same name as the class. So that's our first class. And here we have our second class. So we've got class cube. So again, I've got private variables here. So we have got private int numcube and private int i, and then we have the constructor. So every time this class is instantiated, every time an object is created, the constructor runs. The constructor is always public. It has to have the same name as the class. And it's been used here to initialize a variable value. So we're setting numcube equal to zero. And then we have our methods. So the method here, we have got a public method, calc cube, and it runs 
for i 1 to 10 and it multiplies i by itself three times. Then calls print results and come down here and we write out i, so start with 1, tab across and then it will write out the cubed value and then takes a new line. And there we are, we're at the end of our class cube. So both of these classes start and finish and there is no main section in them. The main section lives in the holder program up top. So here we go, we're going to instantiate some of the classes that we have. So first one, we're going to instantiate square. So create a new copy of square and call it SQ1. And then we're going to instantiate cube. So we create a new copy of cube and call it CU1. And then we just write out a square of numbers 1 to 10. And then we have SQ1 dot calc square. So it jumps up to calc square, calculates it and then prints out the values. And then we have the cube of numbers from 1 to 10. And it uses the object CU1 that we have created. So it uses a copy of, of cube and it jumps to the calc cube method. It will run the contents of that, generate the cube and then write out the answer to the screen. And that read line there is just so that we can hold the information up on the screen. So there we have, we have got two separate classes and they're not interlinked at all. They both do their own thing. There is no linking between those particular classes. Okay, so speaking of linking, um, we have got coupling and cohesion. What you can do is you can couple classes together. So one class can use another. Um, and we need to have a look at what cohesion is as well. So purpose of object oriented programs, as you know, is to split things into different classes and then we link to these different classes that we want from our main program. OK, so the whole idea is that if you create a class, if you make any changes to it, it won't impact any other classes. So the idea is that it should be cohesive. So it's known as cohesion. So classes should be tightly cohesive. They shouldn't really rely on other classes. Um, they should be as independent as possible. And then we're, when we're designing a system, we have to try and maximize independence between the classes. When you have dependence between classes, it's known as coupling. So the idea is that classes should be loosely coupled, loosely dependent on each other, um, but they should be tightly cohesive. So they should be dependent more on themselves um, and isolated if at all possible completely. But if they have to rely on a value from someone else, it should be as loosely coupled as you can possibly make it. So what I've got is I've got an example of this, I've got a coupling example. So what I'll do is I'll have a look at the code and explain what's going on. Okay, so in this example, we've got two classes. One gets a value and the other one prints it. So the one that gets the value passes the value to the one that prints it out. So both classes are dependent, they're coupled. And if we make a variable change, in the class that gets the value, it will impact on the class that prints out the value. So our pretty picture for drawing it, we have got print class. That is a symbol for is dependent on. So print class is dependent on me, the me class. OK, so I'm just going to have a look at the code and try and explain what's going on here. So we've got um, class program up the, stop, the top. That's because we've got two classes and we still want to have our main section. So we have to have this kind of holding class 
if you want, um, because we can't have main in the namespace. It has to be in a class. OK, so we have got two classes here. The first one is me. So I've got class me and we're setting up variables and private int age. So it's always a private variable we make. And then we've got a constructor. The constructor is always public. It has to have the same name as the class. So it's public me. And what we're doing is we're initialising the variable age and we're setting it to zero. So every time a new copy of this particular class is created, it will automatically run the constructor and the age will be initialised to zero. OK, looking at the methods, we have got public int get age. So that will return the age value to the user when prompted for it. And then we've also got public void set age. So we have got prompt for the age and then we read in and we store the age inside the variable called age. Right, so that then closes that class and then we open up a new class called print me. So this class just prints out the age to the screen effectively. Um, so there are no variables. What we do have though is we've got a method, public void print result, and then we've got ref. So we use ref, remember, when we're passing variables and we use it so that we can change the value if required for that particular variable. What we're doing is we're passing the object me and we're just saying something. So remember when you pass a variable between methods, we don't actually have to use the same word. We can use different words. So we just use the word something. OK, so this particular method is looking for a copy of the class me and it's got to be called something, anything. So it passes it to it and then it writes out the result is and then we've got something dot get age. So it's accessing the me class and it's accessing the method get age and printing out the value of age to the screen. So all this is doing is we are passing by reference the me class and we're just giving it a name, any name, it doesn't really matter because it's the data that's been passed across. So we're calling it something. So when we reference it within the method, it's something dot get age. Okay, so move forward. And then we're in the main section. So that class is, is finished. So I have got me and then I've got your age. So I'm instantiating, creating a new object based on the structure of me and I'm calling it your age. And then I'm creating another new object, instantiating it based on the structure of me and I'm calling it my age. So I have got two. One is your age, one is my age. And then I have got a copy of print me instantiated. So print me, calling it M1, and it's a new copy of print me. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is your age dot set age. So we're finding out the value for the object your age, and we're going to set that value for your age. And then we're using the object my age. So remember that the objects are in their own wee bubbles. They're completely different and they've got their own set of variables. So my age, set age, so the age for this particular object is set. And then we're using M1. So we only need one copy of M1 because we can pass your age and then we can pass my age to print it out to the screen. We don't need two copies of it. One is enough. So we've got M1 print results 
and we're passing by reference your age. And then we've got M1 print results and again pass by reference my age. So the value stored in your age is sent to M1 and it prints out to the screen. And then the value set in my age is sent to M1 and it prints the result out to the screen. And that is coupling. OK, so one class can use another. And you can see yourself, if we change something within the age, the me class, it would cause problems or it may well cause issues for the print me class. Any questions, just ask.